Hi. Um, what a day, huh? It's been great. <clears throat> um, uh, my name is Benj. I'm the writer and director of a film called um, Mongolian Bling. Mongolian Bling is my first film, and. Mongolian Bling is my first film, and uh, when I came to Mongolia, I not only knew nothing about hip hop or very little about hip hop, um, but I also knew very little about making a film. So it was quite a big learning experience for me. Um, I thought I was going to make a film just about the hip hop scene here in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia, but it soon grew to be a lot more than just hip hop. And I ended up talking to people about politics, about social issues, about life in general, and I was speaking not only to rappers, but also to politicians, um, traditional musicians, herders, a whole range of Mongolians from all walks of uh, all walks, all parts of the country and all walks of life. But there was one theme which really came through all these conversations, and that was identity. And what does it mean to be Mongolian in 2011? For generations, well, for decades, for hundreds of years, it was pretty easy to define what a Mongolian was. Mongolians lived in a ghe, Mongolians wore a del, Mongolians were warriors, Mongolians were herders. Mongolians lived like this for hundreds of years. But then, the last hundred years has seen huge amounts of changes in Mongolia. Socialism, the influences of Russia and other Soviet states, and then 20 years ago, democracy came. And that really changed the game. The country opened up, and there was a huge flood of information, technology, and knowledge from abroad. What defines today's Mongolians? The warrior Mongolian is gone. The nomad and herder Mongolian is dwindling, yet a new Mongolian is emerging. While this new Mongolian is un, uh, definitely influenced by Western culture, it's also born into a really rich country with a really proud heritage and history. This new Mongolian is found all over the country. They're even found outside the country in, in other parts of the world. But most of them are found here in Mongolia's capital, Ulaanbaatar. I've been coming to Mongolia for seven years now. This is my 10th visit. We normally, we've shot the film over two winters and it was minus 30, so it's nice that it's positive 30 <laughs> degrees at the moment. And one of the reasons I've fallen in love with Mongolia is Mongolia's traditions and the way they've held on to these traditions. So many countries that I've traveled to have lost the very things that make them unique. The youth, so often the youth don't respect or find these traditions uncool and they're soon lost to future generations. While Mongolia has definitely lost some of these traditions, a lot of them still live on. These can be seen in sometimes the smallest ways. For example, the Mongol Del. The Mongol Del walk down the streets of Ulaanbaatar and you'll see it every day. The further you get from the center, you'll see it even more. This is a traditional Mongolian clothing that's still commonly worn, not only in the city, but all across the country. And you may not see many youth wearing these clothes, but if you go to a special occasion or a, a ceremony, you'll often see them wearing them. Another example is coming on stage just now, I, I stepped on someone's foot on the way in, and it's just the Mongolian touch each other's hand to, to show there was no disrespect. There's a lot of these little examples. Another example of the history and the traditions in the country is Sagansar, the Mongolian Lunar New Year. This is a, a tradition which still lives on really, really strong in the country. And it's a time where there's a really em big emphasis on family, and families come together and spend time together. Another example is Nadam, the three manly sports. This is another time when people come together, young Mongolians, all Mongolians all come together. And these behaviors are seen not just in the elder people, but they're seen in all Mongolians, from herders down to the young rappers. It's these rappers that I first noticed the influence of American culture on Mongolia. I've been making the film for about five years now, and there's been a few people who have taught me this stuff about Mongolia. This is G. G could be an American rapper just by looking at him. If you see any of his clips on the TV, you'll see a guy wearing baggy pants, 
baseball hat, basketball shirt, wrapping in front of cars, girls. But if you look closely, you'll see a necklace. And on that necklace hangs a shamanic amulet, which has been passed down through each generation. Shamanism was quite popular in Mongolia early on before Buddhism took over. But it's not the image that G cares about, it's the message. G lives in the poorer parts of Ulaanbaatar called the Gare districts on the outskirts of town. And he sings songs that re reflect the things he sees around him. He's got, we've spent a lot of time filming out in the Gare district and he's got hundreds of fans of these young kids and they really relate to what he's talking about, the issues he's talking about, the problems he's talking about. Sure, he's got a lot of aggro and a lot of abusive, not abusive, but like swear words in his uh, songs, but he's also got a very strong message in there. And he sees himself as trying to educate the youth and trying to empower them and give them information to help them. He sees himself as an educator. He told me that kids these days don't read. There's a book called The Secret History of the Mongols. It's probably the most famous book in Mongolia, and it uh, chronicles the, 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 the birth of the Mongol Empire. G's worried that these young kids won't read, and because they won't read, they won't read this book. So he and some other guys decided to put this message into a song, because they know one thing they will absorb and will listen to is hip-hop. Another person we worked with who's really got a strong message uh, with lyrics is Jenny. Jenny is pretty much the only female rapper in Mongolia. We've been spending a lot of time with her and she's about to release her first album. One thing that was great about working with Jenny is that she had an incredible amount of support. She had a male producer, she had a lot of friends, either rappers or guys who were just collaborating with her, um, making beats, all males, and she had this incredible amount of support as the only female in the industry. Like most Mongolians and most rappers, she listens to a lot of Western music. However, she's conscious not to immerse herself fully in it, fully in that music, because when she writes her music, she wants it to come from her heart, not from foreign influences. She sings about everyday life, the hardships, and she sings a lot about women and the, the difference in equality that they face here in Mongolia. She recently went to France, and along with a Mongolian traditional band, they traveled and we did workshops with French traditional musicians and French rappers. And there they collaborated together and they created new sounds, which was this gorgeous blend of traditional French and Mongolian music and rap, both in French and Mongolian. Traditional music is a huge part of Mongolia, as we've heard today. And it can't be ignored when we're talking about identity. This is Bada Magne. Bada Magne is an epic singer. Epic songs, as the name suggests, are epic songs. They can go on for hours and days and months. Traditionally, families would gather at a gear after a day's work, and they would start singing the song into the evening. The next day, they'd pick it up again and keep on going, and keep on going and going and going and telling these stories. But Bada Magne is scared. And the reason he's scared is because his music is disappearing, and he's worried that one day it'll all be gone. As the older traditional musicians die, so goes the music and the knowledge of the music. He's got every right not to have any respect or not to care about the rappers and the young musicians in Mongolia. Yet in a maturity and acceptance I see again and again in Mongolians, especially elder Mongolians, he really supports the young rappers and the young musicians. He encourages them. He wants them, he told me that America and the West has done hip-hop, they've done rock, and they've done it pretty well. So for Mongolia to stand out and be unique, they need to incorporate a new sound, and he hopes they will incorporate their traditional instruments into their music. There are some bands who've already been doing this. As you heard before, Alton Urag is one of the bands. Bands like Alton Urag, also Jonan, uh, Domog, are incorporating traditional music into their music, and they're blending it. They feature things, instruments such as humi and modern hor. The modern hor is one of the most important instruments in Mongolia, and legend has it it was uh, created from wood and the skin, bones, and tails of a horse. With only two strings, it 
produces an amazing array of sounds and noises from the sounds of the step to the sounds of horses. The other music that's often used is humi. Humi or throat singing, overtone singing is the art of making sound using the voice, throat and uh, lungs and they can produce multiple tones uh, at the same time. If you go and see these bands, you'll see, if you go see these bands in Mongolia, at one of the bars, you'll see hummers parked out the front of the bar, they're with their owners inside listening to this traditionally infused music. Erka, um, who's the lead from uh, Alten Urag, told me only Mongolians will save their traditional music. I find this really interesting, you know. I can do all the documentaries I want, people can say what they want, but only Mongolians will save their traditional music. He loves traditional music, but he knows that not all young Mongolians do. So in a bid to help spread that traditional music, he's infusing it with music they, they listen to as well, such as rock, pop, and metal. So they're taking their love for the traditional music and blending it with the music they listen to, to create this new sound. While there's yet to be a hip-hop version of Alton Urag, Queezer is one of the artists who is doing uh, a mix of traditional and hip-hop music. Um, artists have previously incorporated traditional music into their songs. As far back as the first hip-hop bands, they incorporated traditional music, but a lot of them were incorporating samples or existing songs. What Queez has been doing is he's been taking, working with traditional bands and creating new sounds. I love, I love these sounds. I absolutely love them. But Queezer also has to think about commercial success. He can blend all the songs that he wants, but if no one buys them, and his mark is Mongolian, remember, then it doesn't really matter. So for Queezer, there's a fine balance between creating a unique sound and following a trend. <coughs> Excuse me. This culture of taking ideas um, and um, art from other cultures is not new in Mongolia. Think back to the great empires, the great empire of the Mongolian Empire when they were exploring out down through China, out through Europe, and there they came across religion, they came across technology, they came across foods, and they incorporated this and they learned from all this stuff. And I'm sure along those travels they also learned and incorporated music they found along their way. What's happening now is that they're doing it in a lot more faster way with the internet, and they're doing it with modern things such as music, technologies, and so forth. Jenny, I asked Jenny what the difference was between America and Mongolia, and she said, Americans do things the right way, whereas Mongolians just kind of make do with whatever we've got. And I think it's a good reflection of Mongolia's ability to adapt. They're great at taking what's there, taking what's available, and then creating that and making it into their own. There's been some great talks today, and as we've heard, Mongolia is involving in the fields of health, technology, fonts, fashion. The music is also evolving. While the days of nothing but folk music are gone, Mongolia is on the cusp of creating a truly unique sound. Music has helped define generations. Music has also helped define countries. In doing so, it's, it's helped shape cultures and their identities. How, Mongolia, how music defines Mongolia is up to the rappers, singers, and musicians, but it's also up to you, the audience and listeners. Thank you. <laughs>